Ma'am, I am the manager. Don't be a racist. For a bit of setting setup, I work at a business location that easily rhymes with Buck Free Keyses. It is, was my first job, and I worked my butt off to keep it. It's the easiest job to have where I live, and I wouldn't trade it in for the world if I was ever honest. Ours isn't the prettiest bucks, nor the largest, but all of the staff I work with are great, and so are most of the managers. I even became a manager after three years of dedication at Bucks, and I am proud of myself for it. With Bucks, a lot of people in my area come in and are usually surprised and or upset with how pricey and yet cheap we are with our keys. This usually changes when they realize, after our explaining, that our Bucks is the only Bucks in a good two or three hundred miles. Our corporate sucks, no lies, and as such, our prices jump around like an angry toddler chasing a balloon. Where an order of a large ring of keys might be more expensive than just buying a key card, as well as a medium order of keys, most people understand. We have a lot of MILs, FILs, and moms come in. It's a kid's place, unsurprising, right? Well, a week or two ago was my area spring break. And this is where we met the most stubborn, evil, old hag I've ever thought one could meet. And working where I work, I've met a lot. We're busy throughout the day, and as one of only two managers on duty, I'm helping the front of house stay afloat. Between helping fix some of our more difficult machines, and soothing the complaints of some of our more difficult patrons, everything has been going well. One might have even thought too well. Well, in walks the world's depository of bitchitude, right after I had just finished telling my manager co-worker that today was going to be a fun one. This woman could have pickled a live elephant with the sheer amount of bitchiness resting on her face. I had been walking over to another staff member at our kid check station, which is essentially where we, now get this, check your kids in with you, gasp, horror of horrors, safety for children. What that means is we literally give you a stamp and your kids a matching stamp in invisible ink so that they leave with you and not someone else. Anyhow, Dobie has come in with her grandkids and the apparent D-ear husband, who is now my favorite action hero who arrives precisely as he's needed. Dobie enters first and immediately turns her nose up at my staff member, who politely asks to see their hands so that they might get a stamp. Why are you stamping us? We don't need a stamp. Ma'am, the stamps are so that no one leaves with any of your kids. They're only supposed to leave with y'all. Well, my granddaughter's name and grandson's name are too little to get a stamp. During all of this, me and my staff member are getting treated to the extremest form of stink eye I have ever seen from a grown human. This woman is glaring at us in a way I thought only possible by demons and perhaps very, very irate cats. She's gone back and forth with my staff member and still has yet to even raise her hand. Now, me and my co-worker are both the darkest people in our entire store, skin-wise, an important thing to note, I promise, and the neither of us are very shy about letting our accents change depending on the people we talk to. Someone from the hood? Hell, bitch, we hood too. Someone from the nicer parts of town? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. We hope you have an absolutely blessed day, ma'am. This, too, is also important. We had been nothing but pleasant as can be. This whole time, my staff member has been using his nicest white people voice. He's already a generally soft-spoken dude, but this is the nicest and most panicked I've ever seen him getting. This woman, this fiend, is getting increasingly louder while the two children standing behind her are looking more and more embarrassed. The granddaughter is the older of the two, and the grandson is clinging to her hand with the most nervous stare possible. And all the while, Dobie is just growing louder and more unruly. I quickly step in, taking over, and letting my staff member turn and begin checking people out of kid check. This apparently was the wrong move. Clearly, loudly, and with him still standing right next to me, this fiend in the shape of a woman goes, Oh good, another one. Y'all must breed like roaches. In what is such a casual tone, she might have been talking about the weather. I'm sorry. What? I'm so caught off guard by sheer nonchalance of her statement, I can't do anything but stare. But then was not the time, and I simply hold out my hands and look the woman in her eyes. They are furious. So I speak, using my own white people voice. Ma'am, if your kids cannot be stamped, we have stickers for them. But we cannot let you in otherwise. I say as coolly as I can. Gami is begun to be said, 
A sentence in its infancy, immediately ceased by this hellspawn of a human, who turns and immediately hisses for, Shush! Gammy is talking. After which, she turns back around, and then proceeds to holler for a manager, over my shoulder, directly in front of me. Can I speak to a manager, please? Hello, I need some help. Now I had mentioned earlier that I myself am a manager, and we wear these nice red lanyards that clearly mark us out as managers. By what means, I hear you ask, with manager written all along the length of the lanyard, in bright white against red background. I raise my lanyard, continue to stare as calmly as I can at this woman, and state that I am, in fact, a manager. Wow! She sneered at me, y'all, and told me, Well, someone like you ain't no help to someone like me. What? Ma'am, I am a manager, and any other manager will tell. I start, Hello! Ah, you! Hey, sweetie, can you go get your manager for me? She screams past me, waving her arms at my cashier. Who is a short walk away from Kidcheck? My cashier, bless her soul, pauses in the middle of the order she's taking, looks directly at me, and makes the most confused face ever. He's right there, ma'am, she shouts across the way. I could have hugged her then and there, for she immediately went right back to her own work. This sends Dobie into hysterics. She puts her finger under my nose and begins jabbing my chest to boot. Where is your manager then? I want to speak to your boss. Why won't you just let me and my babies go in? And all other manner of complaint and shriek whining. Gammy, mommy, and da, speaks the little girl, who has stayed silent through most of this otherwise. Gammy turns around and screams at her too, and I quote, Shush before Gammy throws you in the trash like daddy should have. My staff member next to me stops at hearing this. He looks at me, looks at the woman, and I can see his brain telling him that violence is indeed the answer. He opens his mouth, his shoulders and spine are pulling back and straight, and he's sucking in a breath. I nudge him with a foot and send him to go get my manager co-worker. Firmly, no chances for things to get worse. The little girl, crying. Her brother, crying too. Gammy, turned right back around and screaming at me once more. Y'all, I felt like I was trapped in that conversation for eternity. This woman was going round in circles, telling me to get my boss and look what you made me do. Before finally, as my other manager co-worker is walking up, she hisses the winning statement in my face. This is why racial slur for darker people shouldn't be getting jobs like this. I'm not a very large guy by any means now. I'm just shy of 5'11". I'm what is essentially a walking collection of sticks and skin, and I have a terrible habit of smiling when stressed or upset. Now would be a fair time to assume I would be upset. And as such, I'm smiling as I tell this woman. Ma'am. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. If you do not vacate the premises, I will be calling the police. Are you threatening me? Foolishly, I replied. No, ma'am, promising. This sends Dobie on another spiel, right as my fellow manager walks up, and the front doors to our store open up. In comes my hero, who storms through those doors like a hurricane given life. Y'all, this was a man who was suntanned white, tall and broad, with tattoos running from shoulders to wrists. Enter D.H., whose expression shouts with the vitriol of hell incarnate that he is displeased. Mom, what are you doing here? Rumbles the mountain as Dobie turns about and immediately shifts tactics. Oh, D.H.'s name, finally you're here. Would you please tell this nice young man that he can let us in now? I was telling him we needed to wait for you and we were just chatting. Why are son and daughter crying? Oh, they got scared of the stamps? The young man right there didn't listen when I told him they don't like stamps. Dobie's name stop. Just stop. Daughter called me and D.I.L. presumably already. I could hear you. I heard everything from when you started shrieking. Rumbles D.H., who steps forward and scoops up his kids. Sure enough, there's the sound of plastic flattering to the floor as a flip phone falls from the daughter's hand. I myself am still at a loss for how she managed to get that call started and could no more tell you as Dobie could, who looked absolutely floored. You're done. D.I.L. and I are agreed this time. You don't deserve to see these kids anymore, my kids, who you love so much. Get out. Go home. Grumbles the mountain, with a tone that would have made me shit my pants were I the one being chastised. And so Dobie did go, not without cueing the crocodile tears, not without shrieking, that you can't do that to your mother. 
not without D.H. turning around, handing his crying children to his wife who had just walked in, and then leaning into Diob's face to, and I mean this quite literally, rumble the most intense parting words I've heard. Dobie's name. Leave before I fucking carry you out. I'll throw you in the trash right fucking here. Dobie swiftly made her exit, sobbing and wailing all the way out. D.H. then walks over to me, and I'm trying my damnedest to not run for cover at the wrathful expression that turns my way. I'm sorry about that. Rumbles the voice of Zeus, god of thunder and massive size. No problem. Would your kids like to have something off our prize wall? Chirps my co-worker, the voice of an innocent, innocuous cherub. And thus does our story end.